Okay, so much of it remains the same. Your RB3 architecture and landscape of the system introduction to SAP, SAP introduction to ABAP basically. Okay, ABAP workbench, then ABAP data dictionary, basic programming constructs of ABAP. Okay, then you have your selections, and all these things fall as part of your basic constructs of ABAP programming. Then you have okay. OpenSQL. OpenSQL forms a major part of your uh, data dictionary or interaction with database. Okay. And then we uh, we have modularization techniques, writing functions. Right. So, um, Shibu, there is no mention of uh, object oriented in here. So, how object or okay, okay. Oops. Keyword. Uh, Object oriented is there as part of so this is what you have. Object oriented about right, yeah, yeah, okay. So classes and objects, inheritance apps, okay, actually language, okay. So general definitions, classes and what are all the various uh, in detail in the basis of some class French What I will do is I will send across this syllabus to you so that Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Send this document. Share this across. Yeah. So that's all. Yeah. Share it at least with any. Okay. All your email IDs are there. Okay. At least one or two guys, I'll mail it across. Okay. So that you can share it among them. Right. Okay. Yep. Coming back. Okay. So. What we'll, we'll, we'll start off with the SAP R by 3 architecture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, we'll start with the, uh, okay, that is one good point. Okay. So you guys can just mute yourself okay, until and unless you do not want to, okay, I'm not mute the organizer. Otherwise, I would have muted you guys long back. You guys can just mute yourself until and unless you really need. Two things may happen. Sometimes what happens is your mic is too close to the speaker or something and it echoes, the sound echoes. Or sometimes you may be having some background noise coming in. It gets entered into the session. As the sessions are being recorded, all these noises will get recorded. Okay. So just just mute yourself at, at any point in you can just select yourself and click on this button. Okay, over here you can mute yourself. You can see the image of a mic over there. Just mute yourself. Until unless you want to talk, you can unmute and talk. Okay. Okay. And 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 one more thing with the chat is when you are communicating on the chat, if you go a bit below in the chat, you have a drop down over there. In the drop down, what happens is all the names of the uh, organizer and the attenders in the meeting will be available. So if you guys want to chat among yourself which need not have to be reflected on my uh, meeting, you can select the person with whom you want to chat and type it. Okay. As I, as as you know this go to meeting uh, window itself will not be visible when I am sharing my screen, right? So you will have to try it out yourself. So if you open if you click on the plus button of the chat, the chat window opens up below it. So below that you have this drop down, it's a small box where you have the names of the uh, different users who are part of the meeting. Okay, it makes comfortable. So just become comfortable with the GoToMeeting as such. It's, it's a Citrix software. So first time installation only you have problem. You're not changing your system from the next session onwards. Okay. Okay, it's all <laughs> okay. Fine, I just try to okay, walk you through all these things. Okay, Anurag has arrived. So we have Anurag also joining in. So we will start off with, I hope you guys are able to see my screen. So we will start off with the R by 3 architecture. So, okay, as I was telling, the session is being recorded. Okay. And uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, the classes use as a server called ForSync, ForSync or something. So the organizer would place the recordings over there, and the link will be provided to you. So that would, should be fine. Okay. 
Okay, but as I told in the beginning, also do not miss sessions just thinking that the recordings are available. Okay, so so let us start off. We'll start with the SAP R by three architecture. Okay, so SAP is something everybody are aware of. SAP basically stands for Systems, Applications, and Products in Data Processing. It's a name of the organization, just like Microsoft. SAP is the name of an organization. It's a German-based company you have. Okay, it's SAP AG as it is called. It has to be pronounced as SAP. Let me be very clear. Okay, it should always be pronounced as SAP and never as SAP. So SAP R by 3 is the standard architecture with SAP uses for all its systems. If you take any any ERP solution or any system released by SAP, it follows the standard R by 3 architecture. Okay. So R by 3 basically stands for real time three tier architecture. R by 3 stands for real time three tier architecture. Okay. So when we look in detail on the real time architecture uh, R by 3 architecture, this is what we have three layers. The first layer is called the presentation layer, application layer and the database layer. These are the three layers of the R by 3 system. Presentation layer, application layer and database layer or presentation server, application server and the database server, whatever you want to call it. The presentation layer is nothing but the front end from which the user or from where the user interacts with the SAP system. The presentation layer is nothing but the SAP front end from where the user is interacting with the system. That is the purpose of the presentation layer. Okay, that is the purpose of the presentation layer. To access the SAP system, SAP provides something called as SAP front-end GUI. This is how it is. So this is the SAP front-end GUI. It's a it's a small software. Okay, it's a it's a small software, it's a small some MBs of software which is used to access the SAP system. Okay, this is what is called as the logon pad okay and and what you are seeing when you try to log in from this is your sap front end this is the this is the software or this this small tiny software is helping you to run sap on your system access the sap server on your system the sap front end so normally what we do is in the front end we give the details of the server to which we want to connect okay So this is what users see when they install. So they buy a SAP service, and this is this is this Not application SAP. you have to install SAP. <laughs> this is what you will install on the user end. Yeah, and, okay. and this, this is the standard look and feel of SAP. It's never going to change. Okay, whether we are looking at the IDAS system, this IDAS system is basically a training server. It's a training yeah. system. So whether you are looking at an IDA system or you are looking at an actual client SAP system, this mm -hmm. is how it will be. There will be no look uh, difference in the look and feel of the SAP system. So this this is your presentation layer, what you are going to see in the front. So presentation layer can be installed on as many systems as you want. Who all are the users who are going to connect to the SAP server, they all will get the small presentation layer installed on their machine. So it's like next, a uh, in client, is it? It is. It is. Uh, it is like your Internet Explorer. That's the best example we can use. What does the Internet Explorer do? Internet Explorer is responsible for displaying HTML pages. Yeah. It's an application. See, with. Ha. Uh, if the if I type Yahoo.com, it will display me that HTML page for the Yahoo.com. The yeah. Internet Explorer is not responsible for uh, checking whether the user ID entered is correct or not. It takes input from the user, passes to the server. The server will process it and give you back the result. Right? So if you enter your email ID and password, this detail is sent to the server. If it is a valid ID and password, the next page will come. So that again is a HTML page. Or yeah. whatever. So, uh, mm. Same is the purpose of the SAP front end GUI. It will take input from the user and show the output to the user. That's why you call it's a very small software that is installed at the client end or at the user end. The next layer that we have is the application server. This is the heart of the SAP system. 
this application layer or the application server is where all your processing of the SAP system happens, all the processing, all the data process logic is executed in the application server. So it's not there on my machine. Even for me, I am a client, I am just accessing this server. This ECC server from BitLasses, we are just accessing this thing. Okay, so, so this is the details of the server that we are having. So some, somewhere at some location the server is maintained and the details are maintained. So once I give in these details, I am able to log in into the server. So if I click on log on, okay, what it, it allows me to log in into the system. Now here it is asking me for username and password. If I am able to provide the valid credentials, I will be able to access the SAP system as a user or as a client. So this details are processed where all these things are processed over here, the application server. So application server is the heart of the system, that is where all your process logic, all your business process logic is carried out, okay, everything is carried out. Every single piece of ABAP program that we write or we execute will be processed in the application layer. The ABAP programs that we write will be processed in the application layer. Only the output will come back to the presentation layer. So the presentation layer will show only the output. Even the ABAP programs that we write, the programs will run in the application layer. And its output is displayed to us in the presentation layer. So this is a very key, key factor that as a programmer we should always remember. The presentation layer is not running our program. What our programs we write, we develop ABAP programs and then we execute it, there is no EXE file and nothing is getting executed on our system. The program is running in the application server and after completion of the program, the output will be displayed back to us in the presentation layer. Okay, so if your program cannot generate an output, you will see nothing. If your program is running into an infinite loop, you will see nothing. If your program is taking hell a lot of time to finish, you will see nothing. So no intermediate results will be shown to you. The program what, will run. What is the operating system with, on which this uh, application server, I mean application server operating system? Is any special or it runs on? No, no, any operating system. It can okay. be Windows server or it can be Unix server or it can be a Linux server, I don't know. Whatever kind of server based operating systems you can have you can install your SAP on that. Normally yeah. we install this on Windows 2003 server, like currently our IDAS uh, system <coughs> is installed on Windows 2003. And, and what, what any application server is required? Any application server will work like Tomcat or... No, 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 no. Appli SAP is application server is the SAP application server. It again yeah, okay. does not okay. need any application. Which runs on operating system like Windows and Linux. Ah, exactly. Okay. 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 Thank you. So SAP itself is having its application server. It can, the best or the easiest way where you can install it at your local system at your home or something to practice is yeah. Windows 2003. Windows 2003 is the simplest operating system a server system that you can have on which you can install the SAP application server. In a real-time environment, they may be using Unix system or a Solaris system to install yeah. SAP. Okay, depending upon the uh, user volume and the usage and all, they decide like. But normally, for us training and all local, you know, Windows 2003 is more than enough. Okay. okay. So then uh, we I have, have question here. Yeah, have yeah, a question yeah. Here. Uh, is is Windows 2003 the best Windows to run at the home environment or is it like compulsory to run it only on 2003? It has, the application server has to be compulsorily installed on a server. So I know Windows 2003. Okay. <laughs> if there are any other like any other server, if we have, then we can install it on that also. Okay. Windows 2003 is a server. Before that, what we have? NT, I think, some NT, Windows NT. Yeah, that is out of date. Ah, that's all outdated, right? So what I know last is 2003 server. Yeah, R2 are, latest. Yeah, or, or whatever is the latest also you can install. Yeah. So basically the installations will be all done by the SAP ABAP team? Is it no, no, 
the installation of the SAP system will be done by the SAP basis team, not the other. Yeah, right, the SAP basis team. Yeah, for uh, basis, basis and security. Basis yeah. and security team is primarily responsible for installation and maintenance of the system and daily monitoring and user management of the system. So that oh. is the primary task of the basis team. So they will be responsible for installing the system, managing it on a day-to-day -day basis, taking backups and all. Then basis and security. So the security team is responsible for the security of the system. Which user has what kind of security, what kind of rules, responsibilities. What is the user doing on a system on a day-in, day-out basis? All these things can be logged. SAP will be logging every single piece of action the user is doing on the system. So the security team is responsible for generating the logs, check whether the user is doing anything is not authorized to control the authorization of the user. It's basically done by the security team. There is in US and all the security is the security at a higher level. Where we have a uh, security and compliance called the SAP GRC. So there is a, uh, it's, a, it's a bit higher when, when we deal with security. A, a large set of rules and regulations are defined here, which has to be compulsorily followed okay, as part of compliance for security. In India and all, like when we, I, I'm not very sure how things are in Australia. So, but here in India, nobody, we are not that concerned about the GRC based level of security. So it depends, organization to organization. So the basis team is primarily responsible for installation and maintenance of the SAP system. Okay. The ABAP team is responsible only for custom development in ABAP. So for all development related activities and any issues and all, they are responsible. Installation and all the ABAP team is not responsible. Okay. So now, the, yeah. sorry, one more question. The number of uh, users, are they restricted by the the licenses or uh, the licenses licenses user licenses the number of oh. users are strictly restricted by the user licenses okay yeah. so actually sap has a very strict constraint when we try to access the system <laughs> suppose i have logged in into the system as one user let me try to log in again it is very strict when it comes to considering this so it says that the user has already logged in so you should not be logging in so so multiple log on with same user into the production system and all is strict to violation of sap license and sap is also constantly monitoring your system this multi log on and all will get recorded so on a production system it is highly unacceptable that somebody logs in with the same user id multiple times Okay. So it's not generally what we do. It SAP also will be tracking it. Right. Normally we never encourage or in the dev system and all, even in the development system, every single developer will have a separate developer key and a developer ID to work with. Okay. So real time environment we do not use the same user ID to log in. It's not right. But here when we are training on IDES, only one user we are having. Everybody will log in with only that ID. Okay. So now if we look carefully at the application layer, the application layer as a component, this dispatcher is basically a queue manager. Its ro role is to take all the requests coming from different presentation layers and build up a queue to, to uh, sort out the request and send it in a process proper order. The key entity here is something called as a work process. Okay. On the application server, we have something called as a work process not processor, work process. The work process is a time stamped component responsible for processing any ABAP request. Okay, all the ABAP request that we are sending, that is when you execute a program, the program gets executed in the work process. So, there are n number of work process available in an application server. The dispatcher will take the request coming from different, different, different users, put it in a queue and then pass each request to the first available work process. Then again you have different types of work process. Okay, there are certain work process which are dedicated to do background jobs. 
there are certain work process which are dedicated to do printing jobs. So that way you have. So in every application server, you will have n number of work process. How many you want to have? How much? So that what? Sorry, are uh, any definite number of work processes, or is it dynamically created, or? Not dynamically created. It is managed by the basis and security team at the time of installation. Right. The time of installation, they define 10 or 12 or 14 a number of work based on the requirements. Based on the requirements, it is like threads. Number of threads required. So there is a fixed number of work process. It, it cannot be infinite. How many is defined by the basis team? I mean, the basis team controls how many work process, or they can define how many work process you want. See, depending upon the capacity of the system, you define the work process generally. See, just because I can define work process, I will not make 20 work process made available. Because ultimately, the work process is running on this hardware called the server. The server is also a hardware device. So it has a capability, it has some RAM, some size, some memory and all. So you cannot have n number of work processes thinking that okay everything will run, no. So based on multiple factors, the basis team decides how many work process can be defined for that kind of a hardware configuration. Because again in the, in the work process, some will be dedicated as I told. Dedicated only to do background job, dedicated only to do school job, that is printing job dedicated only to do certain type of task. So after all this dedicated work process are kept aside, there are limited numbers which is available for your regular ABAP processing. Okay. Now key thing to remember about the work process is it is a time stamped uh, entity. When we execute a program in a work process or when we give it a task, the work process will try to execute the task for a fixed amount of time. The program that we are writing should get completed within that fixed period of time. The but program the request and not, response. I mean, is it a um, um, synchronous or is, it can be asynchronous request? I, request and response in the sense. I mean, the request should be synchronous or asynchronous. It need not. I mean, it, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Do you understand my question? Can we have no, asynchronous no. request? Just like you know. In web technology, we have Ajax, if you know. Mm -hmm. So, asynchronous uh, request. Can we send asynchronous request from the? Um, so, can we write a code which accepts? No, the no, no. I got you. I got your point. I got your point. Yeah. It is, it it is a synchronous request. That is, from the yeah. client you are sending a request, and then you your client is busy doing something else. Yeah, By yeah. Exactly. Pro, uh, no, no. Okay. It will it be synchronous. Yeah, it has to be synchronous. You will be waiting. Once you execute, okay, normally mm -hmm. what happens is varies. Like this water keeps rippling when you send in a request. You send in a request to run certain thing. Okay, if you Oh yes. I guess so you you this corner, that it, is ha, it is rippling, indicating that it is still processing. So what happens is till you get the output. Until and un okay. But that doesn't mean that you cannot do asynchronous also. There are mechanisms in available. In ABAP programming, we have coding available in ABAP programming. Using those coding and all co techniques, you mm -hmm. can achieve asynchronous processing, parallel processing and all in ABAP. Normal processing is synchronous. Okay. Normal so what happens, what happens if it times out the process? Does it retry on, on itself or we need to do it? It will dump. If, if it times out, the program dumps. Error that is the error in, in SAP terminology, we call it as dump. It will it will throw a short dump, a typical output which looks somewhat like this. Mm -hmm. This is what is called a dump. You will get an output something like this. So here you will see what went wrong, error at ABAP runtime, blah 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 blah. So whatever was the reason for the error. Okay. okay, whatever could have been, the entire analysis will be here. So the primary analysis you will get would be timeout. So you will get timeout error over here. The program tried to execute and execute and execute and execute, but it timed out. Okay. So it will always be there will be a big question mark in our mind. See, it is not necessary that every single ABAP program can be finished in a given time. 
Okay, though as a developer, I write a program ensuring that it will get processed as quickly as possible. Yeah. Sometimes what happens is the volume of data that I fetch from the database is so high. Millions of records have come into my program. Now I am processing all these records. No matter what I do, it takes time. Yep. In such a scenario, can't we run these programs? We can run these programs. Then what we will do is we pick specifically background processors. That is we will send these kind of ABAP requests to background. Run it as a background job. So when we run a program as a background job, then what will happen is the program can run, 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 run for any amount of time. So the background work process is not a time stamp. The background work process can go on and on and on till the final result is generated. So that is why I said different types of work process will be there. Some work process will be, it's generally called as a dialogue process. You have it on your screen, you give the command, it will run and immediately give you back a result, dialogue process. Then you will have school requests or school process. They do only printing jobs. Then you have background work process. They do only background jobs. So different type of work process. Okay, so that is how it runs. Uh, then, so, yeah. Yeah, 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 good. So in a normal process, not a background process, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in a normal process, are we able to define the time limit uh, no. before it times off? No, as an ABAP programmer, you will not be able to control the time. But mm -hmm. as if you are part of the installation team, the basis team, while defining the work process, you can define the time. How right. much time it should run, that can be defined. But that cannot be controlled from an ABAP program. So as an ABAP program, you can... The same in all the other uh, things, is a processing time, so max processing time will be defined. Yeah. So else, after that it will dump. Basically. It will dump. So you can mention the time period for the work process. How much time should be allocated per work process, per, per request? Memory as well, right? Memory, I'm not very sure. You will have to right, check no. out. Memory, no I'm not very sure. But it is there, ABAP memory and stack memory, different kinds of memory is there. So how much and what, I'm not, like how they control it, that I'm not very sure. Okay, okay no problem. Okay. Yes, yeah. you go in application server layer. Uh, mm -hmm. One dispatcher, you will be having multiple work processes or uh, how this is uh, designed? No, no, don't go by don't go by this diagram. You generally have only one dispatcher and then n number of work processes. And yet this is a scenario where they are having multiple application servers itself. Okay, the application server itself has been, uh, you know, what you say, it's, it's a scalable layer. So you are having yeah. multiple application layers. But normal scenario like in our case and all, there will be only one dispatcher and n number of work process. It's not a scalable model, it's not this big. But on a huge uh, model where you, you can have multiple application layers all acting as one system. Then you will have n number of dispatchers, so users will be segregated. Users will be grouped, n number of users to one queue it will go, n number of users will go to another queue. Kind of load balancers kind of thing? Or load, exactly, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now out of this first two, three layers, the first two layer is SAP. These are SAP components, SAP yeah. provided softwares. The presentation layer as well as the application layer, both are SAP provided softwares. It comes from SAP. The last layer that it, we have is called as the database layer. Now the database layer is not an SAP component. It is not provided or sold by SAP. It symbol, is, sorry. Uh, Shiva, uh, sorry. In the work process only, in the application layer only, is there any mandatory work process uh, need to be defined or what is it? Really? Maybe there. <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe there. Certain work processes have to be compulsorily defined. Maybe. Uh. I am not, I'm not very sure of. Okay. Okay. Coming back to the database. Yeah. The database layer is not an SAP component. The only constraint that you have from SAP for the database is it should be an RDBMS, that's all. Okay, so we can, the database can be any database so available in the market. It can be an Oracle database or it can be a Sybase database or it can be, uh, I don't know what else. 
okay, uh, Microsoft no, MS SQL Server, okay, it can be any database. There is no constraint to it. Okay. The only constraint SAP keeps is it should be a, a relational database management system. Okay, and so very at the installation time. Mm -hmm. At the installation time, uh, who defines the database, like who integrates the database, we or uh, uh, the base system? Base system only. Base okay. system only. The integrate at the time of installation, actually during installation, first the database is installed and on top of it the application layer is installed. Yeah. It is done by the base system only. Okay, they will be okay. installed. Yeah, but data the access object, I mean data access layer, DAL, or uh, application server layer. No, come back again. Uh, data access layer. So, is mm -hmm. it generic to all the database irrespective of the database on the background? So, as in I'm writing a code for and I'm using Oracle for the code and I can deploy that application with my MS SQL, SQL database. Mm -hmm. is yeah, it it's possible? Actually, yes, it's a very good question you have said. Wonderful question. We are having the underlying database is uh, Oracle and uh, I'm writing a code which is specific to Oracle. So tomorrow this is replaced with the MS SQL Server. Yeah. Actually what happens is the code that we write, the ABAP program that we write has no direct interaction with the underlying database. So the selection statements or statements that you write to interact with the underlying database gets yeah. processed at the application layer. That, that is what that is called Open SQL. We don't write SQL, we write Open yeah, SQL. Yeah. That's an SQL of the ABA programming language. The application layer will convert the open SQL syntax to native SQL. Native SQL is nothing but the SQL of the underlying database. Yep. So as an ABA programmer, I am least bothered. As an ABA programmer, I am least bothered what is the underlying database. Okay. What is the underlying database is not a concern at all for me. Because irrespective of that, I will be writing the standard ABAP syntax only. Okay. Yeah. I think we so is an layer there on the application server layer. So. Yeah. So at the application server layer, that conversion happens. Yeah. Okay. I think Venu is having some issue. With okay. Venu, you are able to hear us, or you are still having problem? Okay, Venu is. <laughs> okay, just try to chat with Venu and see if he was coming in and going out and in and out. Having some issue getting connected. Okay, now one very very important thing that we should always remember when we talk about database is the SAP system will always use a centralized database. That is, you do not connect to some ABCD database and get some data, no. When you log in into the SAP system, you are connected to the underlying database, that's it, period. We do not like, like in Oracle, uh, like in suppose I am writing some Visual Basic application. I have ODBC, JDBC connections using which I will connect to some database and fetch some data. All these stories will not happen in above. The SAP database is a central part or it, it is an integrated part of the SAP system on a whole. Though it's a third party component, it is a part of the SAP system. You have a centralized database in SAP. We do not have okay multiple databases. What is happening? So that means uh, SAP can't work on cloud? Is that no, SAP SAP, the way the SAP basic system is, it cannot work on cloud. Okay. It was not designed to work on cloud. That is where SAP has come up with something new called SAP HANA. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hot topic today out there, Okay, SAP HANA. So SAP HANA, SAP NetWeaver, these are concepts which are trying to utilize the functionalities of cloud. How effectively at this point, I don't know. Okay, I'm not uh, out there, but SAP is selling. SAP is selling very strongly as its products like SAP HANA and all, trying to bring in the features of cloud and cloud computing and distributed database and all. But 
at the heart or at the core of the R by 3 system, it is not designed right for it. to have central, uh, distributed database, right. has to have a centralized database. So, what SAP may be doing, if it is just my guess. Huh? Mainly is continuously having some problem. Oh, shit. Okay. See, what what uh, SAP is primarily doing, or what it could be doing, is see your cloud is basically helping you to store your data or it acts as a data. So it it can have an interface between the SAP at the applications layer level and that's this cloud rather than having the user. So for the user it's always a centralized database but for SAP itself it may be storing or maintaining the data across. Maybe I'm just giving a wild guess. Okay, but SAP as such is designed to have a centralized database. No distributed database concept is accepted. Okay, all the information even your ABAP programs and all the code that you write, everything is stored in the database. ABAP programs, SAP ABAP programs, everything is stored in the database. Nothing is stored outside of the database. Okay, Vihinu is not able to hear. Okay, another view of the application layer that is provided. Okay, so a, a very user oriented view of the three layers. You have the presentation layer, the application layer and the database layer. Okay. So, presentation layer as I said is the user interface where the user is interacting. When the user is entering any request, the request is sent to the application layer where the user request is processed inside a work process. All user requests that comes from the presentation layer are ABAP requests only. It's all ABAP programs. Even standard SAP is ABAP program. It's nothing different. What we write also is ABAP program. What SAP also has written is ABAP programs. So, all business process logic is built in ABAP programming. The entire business process logic in SAP is built in ABAP programming. So we can look at standard SAP code, we can debug the standard SAP code, we can understand what those code is doing and they have written. Okay. And the underlying the layer is your database layer where all your information is maintained including the ABAP programs. Even the ABAP programs are maintained in the underlying database. So, we have a terminology called a repository. So, repository is basically a place in the underlying database where all the SAP related information is stored. Your ABAP programs, your tables, this, that and all those developments that have been done which is making SAP run. That is stored in the repository, SAP repository. Okay, now when we look at the database, the database can be cross client and client specific. We have a word called a client. We will go into the details of what client is and all. So we have certain piece of information, so a major chunk of the repository or your entire repository is a cross client information. Okay, it is cross client information. That means you have multiple clients on the same. Uh, we can have multiple clients on the same system which can have different view of the data. Yeah. So though the database is central and centralized still yeah. I can create multiple views. Okay. Depending on the client ID. Depending or something on the, exactly. Data exactly. exactly. Depending on the client you can vary. In the no, Hello? Hello? Yeah, now you are able to hear? Okay, so you have muted yourself, right? That's fine. Okay, we know you may have echo, so the best thing is you mute it. Okay, then just cross-check your hardware device so that the trouble is not. Okay. 
Okay, cross client is information which is available across every client that you log in. Your entire repository data is cross client. Your entire repository, that is the system data is cross client. Then you have something called as client specific data. Data specific to every different client. So in client specific data, you have two major things. One is application data and one is customizing data. Application data is nothing but your business data. Master records, transaction records. Okay. Transaction All records is the application data? Is application data. All your business data is application tables or application data. And what about okay. customizing tables? Huh. Customizing what is customizing data? What is customizing data? Customizing data is basically your configuration information. See, now when we buy a SAP system or when we implement an SAP system for a given client, the SAP system has to be informed of who you are. So, as a functional owner, what we do is, suppose I am a finance guy, what I will do, I will tell the SAP system, well, who am I? So, we will define the company, define the company code define the number of uh, uh, plants that we are having, define the number of uh, uh, warehouses that we are having. Okay, so, so, so that, is, that is the idea of customizing data, that is, it is configuration information, you are configuring your organizational structure or org structure into the SAP system. So, from tomorrow when your system starts running, this is the org the structure that it will use, what is the top level, what is the company, what are the different companies underneath it, what do you have in each company, what are the different GLs you have, what are the different sales areas you have, what are the different plants you have, which plant comes under which company. This is the entire organizational structure or organizational chart that is defined. That is your customizing data. Then, then what else you can have as customizing data? Now, suppose you are uh, you you are you are creating uh, some sales orders. So certain information in the sales. So this this particular customer should always be assigned to this particular sales area or something like that. So a, a set of rules that you define in the system. Whenever I take this material and sell this much quantity, this much amount of discount should be given to the customer. If he's a regular customer, this much discount. If he is a new customer, this much discount. So pricing condition, you are, you are defining a, a, a condition, a rule. All these things form up your configurational data because once you set up this configurational rules and all and keep it, it will be there running. Then every time you create a sales order, your application data is building or getting created. One time entries. Those are static data basically, configuration. Mm -hmm. once kind of static that. data. We, we should not say that it is fully static yeah, but because but still it is uh, but I mean, uh, kind of static data once defined okay. it is there yeah because Unless. what happens is this data keeps on changing and one of the major work a functional consultant does is making changes to this like pricing condition I was telling so a new season come Christmas season so you set up a new pricing condition or uh, the profits are going on or you are making a lot of profits want to share with the customer a new pricing condition so you keep changing the condition or every now and then a new product has been introduced so some new rules or a new plant has come in so you add in that plant the plant gets added into the system so all relevant configurations has to be done so the functional consultant will always be doing all these kind of things so sometimes certain rules will not work correctly in scenario the issue is raised then you go and do the testing and then fix the scenario so that kind of thing configuration for that, uh, for that, uh, they, they do the changes in using presentation layer only, right? Nah, they will for percent presentation layer, you cannot, you cannot see your application layer or database layer. You will so, always interact with presentation layer only. Until and unless you are a basis consultant, you will not be seeing your presentation layer. Okay, oh, sorry, present your application layer, sorry, sorry, your application layer. Okay. Always you are interacting with presentation layer only you will not have any direct access until unless you are having a standalone system in which you install your own SAP then you are starting your SAP application server and you are looking at your server but otherwise you will never be accessing your SAP server you will not be given access to it 
you will always look at and work with the SAP system through the presentation layer. Then only we can control. If somebody goes from behind and go to the database, then he can go and do whatever he feels like over there, right? Yeah, but we are talking about the scenario where some prob there is some problem, something is going wrong. Anything, what whatever may happen. Maybe, maybe what the code. So the code should whatever be... Whatever may be happening. No access to server, no access to database. You have to resolve it through the presentation layer. Okay. 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 If data, database administrator is there, database administrator can go and uh, using the SQL statement or something. Yeah, he can make yeah. changes or... Uh, he can make changes, but all these yeah. things should not be. <laughs> he can make changes, but no. Even the basis consultant should access the SAP system through the presentation layer only. He will be given the respective T codes to access the database from the presentation layer. You are not supposed to do okay, these roundabouts. Okay? Because what happens is, see, the simplest situation that I will tell is, you try to do this kind of fishy things. If it resolves a problem, well and good. But if it spoils the problem and something happens, something serious happens in the production system and your data is lost, SAP will not hold itself responsible. SAP, when SAP constantly monitors every single installation of the SAP server in this world. Every client who buys SAP and installs it and runs on SAP, SAP is monitoring their system. SAP takes guarantee of their systems running smoothly. So you do these kind of fishy things, SAP will wash its hand. Tomorrow you lose the data, SAP will not do anything to help you retrieve back the data or whatever it is. For that matter, when we try to make changes into standard SAP code also, it will not allow you. You can see the ABAP code, but you cannot change it. So you, if you want to change the standard SAP code, you have to request with SAP and they will give you an access key to open up the program. The minute you open the program and do some change, the license rights or the uh, what do you call guarantee for that program is gone. So now that program results in any kind of data loss or the system goes for a toss, SAP is not responsible. So that reason why SAP strictly says no going from the back and doing nonsense. Anything and everything access through the presentation layer only for every single maintenance related thing, security related, for anything and everything SAP has provided transactions. There are T codes, there are transactions, there are methods available. Follow the methods. Okay. So that is to be strictly followed, very, very strictly followed. There is another so in the so, suppose, <coughs> suppose we are writing a program, so we go to the GUI, mm -hmm. then open a program code, mm -hmm. then write the program or change the program. Yes. So that program will be saved to the database. Yes. Then we, when we test the program, we still go to the GUI, then test it, it will go to the application uh, layer, then go to database, then give us the output. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is the flow. Okay. That is exactly the flow. It will take, because when we think about this as a flow, you will see it's such a time consuming task. But that is how SAP will do it. That is how exactly SAP will do it. See, there is one more reason why very down the line we will study that. Why we should use the presentation layer. Okay. So before that, this one diagram, it's basically the structure of your repository system. Like when we, when we just now spoke SAP repository where everything is maintained. This is, a, this is a pictorial view of your repository. What is repository? Repository is nothing but a collection of different functional modules or functional areas. CFI, MM, HRS, BP, PPM, QM, AM, all these functional areas. So a repository is a collection of different functional areas. Now if you drill down further and open up each functional area, what is a functional area? A functional area is a collection of transactions. Every functional area is a collection of relevant transactions. Transactions that are relevant to that particular function module. Like if suppose I take a functional area, sales and distribution. So I will have transactions like creating a customer or creating a sales order, creating an inquiry, creating a quotation, okay, making a delivery, picking up the material or doing the delivery. These are transactions related to sales. 
if I go to HR, HR module, I will have uh, transactions like creating an employee, okay, adding details about the employee, moving the employee from one department to another department, okay, capturing the employee's leave request, different transactions. So depending upon each functional area, you will have collection of transactions relevant to that functional area. Now, if you drill further down into each of these transactions, these transactions are nothing but above programs. They are tables and programs and function modules that are there. So that is what this diagram is trying to tell you. A repository is a collection of functional areas. A functional area is collection of transactions. Transactions are collection of above programs. So ultimately everything melts down to your above programs. Okay. Okay, navigation in SAP. Okay, tools, ABAP workbench. This is a common term that you will be hearing throughout your ABAP programming. ABAP workbench. ABAP workbench is nothing but a transaction or an interface, front-end interface provided by SAP where you will get all the various tools that you need to do your ABAP development. Tools like what? Tools like an ABAP editor, class editor, menu painter, screen painter, debugging, this, that and all those kind of tools. About workbench. Okay. Okay. Navigation in SAP, and okay, this is you come back to this topic. And let us navigate. So as I said, you need to install your SAP front end GUI. It's a small time software. So you get yeah, but the, but it's not about the software. The problem is the server access. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You won't give it for free. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay. <laughs> In a day or two, big classes will be providing you the details. It's the big classes server only. You can see here. Yeah, okay. So big classes so, server. It's available yeah, on. It's available on control S. So should be accessible there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and what about the IDE? I mean, the development environment. Do you provide that as well? The software for development, the workbench tools. One minute. The workbench is available in the system itself. You don't okay. have to separately need a workbench. So, so the dev once development environment. What? What? Come back again. Development environment. We will come to that. I will discuss that. Okay. So the first thing is logging in into the SAP system. So once you select your server, so this is your standard logon pad that you have, or the logon screen. To to log in into the SAP system. Key information you pass, client, username, password and language. Okay. So client, this is what I was talking about okay, a while ago we were talking about clients somewhere over here. Yeah. Right? We had a client, client specific and a cross client and all. So this is client. So the simplest definition you can give for a client is client is a group of users client is a group of users with a similar view of the data. Client is a group of users with a similar view of the data. Okay. What it is and all we will discuss down the line. Username, give your username that you have. So give the username and then the password. So username and password will be provided very soon. The last piece of information that you give is language. By default, it is set to English. Okay, the language is the login language. SAP is a multilingual system. SAP is a multilingual system. That is, you can log in into SAP in more than one language. So you need to mention the language in which you want to log in. So you want to log in in English or German or Spanish or Japanese or whatever it supports the language. Okay. So luckily or unluckily it does not support any Indian languages as of now. Luckily? Okay. It's mostly European languages that it is supported. So once we are inside, this is your main menu or the easy access menu as it is called. It's You have your menu bar. The next one underneath it is the standard toolbar. It's called standard toolbar because throughout SAP, in any screen you go, this is how it will look. It will always be the same, fixed, no change to it. The menu bar will change 
depending upon the underlying program. But the standard toolbar will remain fixed. And you have your title bar. The title of the underlying application will come up over here, title bar. And then you have your application toolbar. This is your application toolbar. This is again dependent on the underlying application. What program is running based on that, this will come. Some programs will have blank application yeah. toolbar. Some programs will have application toolbar. Okay, so it depends on the underlying program. Then towards the bottom you have is your status bar. Uh, sir, sir, for, for, yeah, sorry, uh, for the front end user, for the front end user, yeah. So, what is the screen uh, look like? Like, is it similar or exactly. for the suppose for a for, for a manager like uh, SAP manager, yeah, HR manager for the developer, uh, anybody, everybody, this is how it will look. This is the front end. This, this is, is the front end. end. Even the HR manager will. Everyone. Yes. Okay. Everybody. Okay. The end users of SAP. The developers on SAP, the functional consultants on SAP, the basis consultant on SAP, for everybody this is how SAP screen will appear. Even the real time SAP, IDAS SAP, only real time SAP, you see this logo over here, only maybe like your company name may come up over here, some people have photos over here, some people have photos over here. Okay, is it the case that based on the level of access you have, you would get different set of tools or different trees in the navigation menu? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's mic is echoing. Yeah, and somebody have his TV on or something. TV? TK. Yeah, I have some some TV sounds as well. Hello. Ah, okay, now it's stopped. Okay. So after asking the question, just mute yourself so that. Hi, this is Venu here. Yeah, Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. loud and clear. Hello, Venu. Go ahead. Okay. Now Venu is talking, we cannot hear. <laughs> some problem with the system, maybe. Venu <laughs> okay. is having problem for some time. For some time. Okay, coming to authorization, depending upon the authorization, the user menu will vary. Okay, your drill down, the drill down menu that you have over here, this can be controlled by the user. SAP user with which I log in is a super user. He has all authorization and all right. He's seeing everything. Okay, normally if you are logging in, as you said, a HR manager. When a HR manager logs in, he will not see anything in logistics. Why should he access logistics? So HR manager will not have logistics. He will have only human resources. Okay, so that way. The tools. Tools is a very dangerous. This should be given only to the ABAP developer. ABAP workbench and all. So on a production system to an end user, ABAP workbench will not be available. So this main menu is controlled by the user access or the user role that is created. So every user will be assigned a role and every user will be given a set of authorizations that he has. So based on the authorization only he can access. The look and feel of the SAP system remains the same. So if suppose you are not authorized to run a certain transaction, then the system will throw an error when you try to run it. Okay? You are not authorized to run it. Okay, like in production system you go and type SC38, it will say you are not authorized to run SC38. Production system, you should not run easy that way. Okay, so now <laughs> can I can I interrupt? This is Venu here. Yes. Please. So can, you guys can hear me? Yes. Okay, I missed the uh, I think the introductory part, but that's okay. We'll probably cover that one, you know, yeah. maybe later. So, but from what I understand so far is that SAP is a thick client application, there is no web uh, browser as of yet. What we are uh, seeing now no, 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 is no, a no. thick no, application. I didn't, I didn't make a statement like that saying that it doesn't have a browser. If you go for SAP NetWeaver, yeah, you can browse it, it on is the browser completely well. web based. What SAP has done is, it has removed the presentation front end GUI and has moved to Internet Explorer. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, 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 
okay, in the R by 3 layer, it still follows R by 3 architecture. Only thing is, it removed the front end GUI and went in for Internet Explorer or the browser, basically. SAP introduced a programming language called, actually it's already there, BHTML. HTML or HTML coding. SAP has BHTML, Business HTML. When you use Business HTML and design screens, the interface has the same look and feel as the SAP has now on the browser. Then it has developed one more ABAP based ASP. You have ASP, Application Server Pages, programming language to do coding on server. In, in a, uh, ABAP, it's not ABAP actually, the band pro, you have something called as BSP, Business Server Pages. So using that, you can launch applications on the portal and access SAP from the portal. Is there? Okay, SAP has thought about it. Only question I have is like uh, Anurag or somebody added out whether we can have the database on the cloud. SAP HANA talks about cloud. What is the details? I do not know. I am not very sure how exactly the architecture of the cloud is. But something relevant to cloud only is SAP HANA. SAP NetWeaver is where you see all the web browsing or web based capabilities of SAP. Because see what happens is your application server remains the same. Only thing is your front end is replaced from a front end GUI and they have introduced Internet Explorer. The behavior is same. Front end GUI also is doing what Internet Explorer does. Takes input, sends it to the application server, process is happening over there. Only the output is coming back. Only the output is coming back. So the output page comes right. back and gets played on the browser. Okay, so browser based is there. It's not very popular or it's not like anybody, everybody is using. It's catching up slowly. Okay, so the browser based SAP environment is catching up slowly. Though those clients who have been already running on SAP for ages now, they have already moved or are in the process of moving. It's all cost, right? So with a slowed down economy, we are having a delays. But otherwise, out there in the US and all, you can see people, companies are moving to the web. The new ones, the companies okay. are now going in for SAP and all, it will take some more time. But eventually they will also move to the web. That's for sure. They will move. Okay, so okay. Is like I have another question. Yes. So this course, yes. ABAP is basically, a, it's not specific towards a particular functional module like a HR or finance or insurance, which yes. we hope to get into. But ABAP is geared towards across all the functional modules. Exactly. ABAP is okay. the core programming language of SAP. You take any SAP system, whether it is SAP APO or SAP CRM or SAP HR, FICO, MM, any module, anything you take, all the business process logic in SAP is built in ABAP. Okay, okay, ABAP is the core programming language of SAP. Even when they went to the web, they developed BHTML, BSP. Okay, they didn't go in for using other languages. Initially, SAP tried to use Java and all. And they dropped it. They are sticking to SAP. Why SAP introduced object-oriented programming? To make all these things comfortable in ABAP actually. Okay, it's very difficult to make an ABAP or a Java programmer or a Java programmer an ABAP. So SAP thought, let us introduce all these new things into SAP, ABAP itself. That's how BSP came into ABAP, BHTP came into ABAP. So ABAP is the core programming language of SAP. Any business process logic that is written, is written in ABAP. Okay, even this easy access screen that you see, see there is some program, SAP LS MTR underscore navigation. So you can open up and see this program, it is an ABAP program. SAPL SAPL SMTR SAPL SMTR This is an ABAP program. Go inside it. It's on ABAP code. It's on ABAP code that has been written over here. Okay, it may be object oriented or procedural, but it is on ABAP over here. This is ABAP code. So that's all ABAP code. 
small ABAP code. Any, any piece of code that you see that runs is ABAP code. So a, a cross functional yeah. What version of SAP are we using? The current system that we are using is ECC 6.0. Okay. okay, this current system that we are using is the ECC system 6.0, latest version we are using. But ABAP has nothing to do with that. You go to the oldest of SAP system also, ABAP is ABAP. Maybe, maybe you will not see this code. So we saw something. You may not see a code like this. Why? Yeah, the because it says in all method. Game. It says all method. This you will not see in the old ABAP code. Why? Anybody call method? It's an object-oriented syntax. You know? Method, uh, class, uh, and all is a OOPS syntax. Yeah. So OOPS came in into ABAP much later, recently, like from e SAP R by 3, 4.7 onwards, we started having object-oriented programming and all in ABAP. So till that point in time, we did not have OOPS and all. So this is all new, but still it is ABAP. So throughout entire SAP, business process logic, the minute you talk of business process logic, you are talking of ABAP. So ABAP has nothing to do with any functional area, but ABAP has to do everything with functional area. See, an ABAPer cannot write a business logic if he does not understand business. This is the reason why we always insist that the ABAPer understand functionality. Without understanding functionality, ABAPer cannot write ABAP program. Okay, what I always say is, ABAP is a very easy programming language. If you compare ABAP with the C programming or Java programming, ABAP is like peanuts. Very easy programming language. But the problem is SAP. If you do not understand the business, you do not understand the business functionality, what code you will write? You don't use ABAP for designing a student database system, college data entry system. You do not use ABAP for all these things. ABAP is used for a very specific purpose to design programs in SAP. So if we do not understand the functionalities in SAP, we will not be able to do anything in ABAP. So if suppose tomorrow we are working on insurance sector in ABAP, we need to understand insurance. We need to understand the business process called insurance, what happens in insurance, how SAP runs insurance, what kind of data are you capturing in insurance. When we say SAP insurance, what are you capturing? Are you capturing only the client details, type of premium is, type of insurance he has taken and the type of premiums he is going to pay or is my, is my SAP system going to work or act like an underwriter calculating the insurance premium he should be paying based on the risk that is keyed into the system. Now what are the information are it, that is going to be feeded into the system and then how the system has to react. So, a yeah, Ababa has to know it. He should understand it. When the functional owner says premium, he should understand what is premium, what is the purpose of premium, what is the meaning of premium. Okay, these are very important. Important. Same is the case for the functional owner also. The functional owner, it is not hard and fast rule that he understands Ababa. But it is always good that he knows Ababa. Because then what happens is, if there is any issue that he is facing and he is running up, application. He can debug it and check out like is the logic going wrong, is the logic that he provided to the technical team incorrect, why things are going wrong, some errors are coming which you are not able to understand. So if you debug it you will get a get some clue. Oh, okay, the entry in this table is missing and the error is coming. Why what that is entry? the right transition path? I mean from ABAPR to a functional or from functional to ABAP? Okay, ABAPR can always become functional. Functional will never become an ABAPR. Okay. That is for sure. A, func okay. a functional person will never become. You will not go in a direction where you will earn less as you grow, right? Yes, so which way it is less? So obviously functional. Functional owners are paid far, far more than what ABAPR is paid. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like you know between being a being a developer and a solution designer. If you are a solution designer and if you can develop, you can write code, then you are the king. You are the king, exactly. So functional. Don't know what the developer is talking about. You know, then they'll take you for a ride. So, you know, sim similar to similar to .NET or Java or other you know other technology. Mm. Same. It, it, it is. It is same. There you are. You are. 
you are a solution provider, here you are a functional consultant. The idea is the same. Uh, adapter always migrates to functional consultant because he wants to grow. He will say, oh, fed up of programming, better money, more money, okay, and all these reasons they move out. Okay, move out to functional. But functional uh, consultant move into ABAP, sometimes it happens. People like technology a lot and they enjoy technology. You want to do coding, you are like, you know, enjoy coding and you, know, you can always come down. Okay, I don't say that developers do not earn or it's it's less money. Like if you go deep into technology and all, lot of technology stuff and all, you can. But I have never seen that happening. That is why okay, <laughs> practically, <laughs> I've never seen that happening. That reverse migration is always technical to functional people will go. And they become techno-functional. That's the hot and key thing that is picking up in the SAP world today. Techno-functional. So techno functional, everybody, okay, technical and functional, you are aware of both. Out in the US and all, it's like in demand. They generally expect the functional owner to know a bit of ABAP, understand a bit of ABAP, ABAP to understand functional. ABAP to understand functionality requirement was there right from the beginning. But now things are slowly changing. Functional owners are required in during interview processes and all. They are requested or asked to know about certain things in ABAP, debugging, certain things, certain basic skills of ABAP and all are requested. Okay. It's not that they have to sit and do hardcore coding, thousands of lines of code. ABAP will be there, he will be writing the code. You are understanding it or not. That's the key thing. Okay, coming back to the navigation screen. Okay. So, main menu, you have your menu bar, your standard toolbar, title bar, application toolbar and you are having your easy access menu. ABAP is inside tools, ABAP workbench development. This is where you find all things related to ABAP workbench. All your things. Okay, now if you see ABAP editor, this is the ABAP editor. If you double click on it, okay, it will take you to the program, which is nothing but the ABAP editor. This is what the ABAP editor is. Again, you see your menu bar. The standard toolbar is fixed. It does not change. Application toolbar has changed. It is dependent on the underlying program that is running. Every program that is getting executed in a bar, or sorry, in the system will have something called as a transaction code. Call it as T code or transaction code. So like the ABAP editor is having a transaction code SE38. What you can do is you have this column or input box in the standard toolbar which accepts T code. So I can give it SE38 and hit enter, it will take you there. So you do not have to depend on the uh, hierarchy, this tree. Okay, easy access tree, you do not have to depend to navigate to a certain functionality. So suppose I have to go to logistics, sales and distribution, okay, sales support, sales activities, or where is it is? Sales, order. So this is to create an order. Or else I can simply type VA01. It will directly take me to create sales order. So knowing the transaction code is very important. So depending upon the area of functionality you expertise in, the expectation is that you should know the T codes, primary T codes or the major T codes in that area. Suppose you are an ABAPer, you should be knowing the basic T codes related to ABAP. Very, very important. Okay, as an ABAPer, you should be knowing the T codes related to ABAP. What are the key T codes that are related to ABAP? Say SE38 is ABAP editor, SE11 is a data dictionary, SE24 is class builder, SE37 is function builder. So that way you should be knowing some main uh, T codes of that particular functional area. Very important. Okay. So you tend to learn them, you end up knowing them because every day you are going to those transactions again and again and again, you end up remembering them. Okay. If you do not have to sit separately and learn them. As we keep on using them, we end up remembering them. Or else we always have the easy access. If, if you are not able to get from the easy access, the best source you have Google. Okay. So, SAP is a... Okay, SAP is a Google driven uh, environment, I always say. Okay. Should never work uh, on SAP when if you do not have Google uh, along with you. Okay, the answer is out there. You are not the first person working on SAP. 
Okay, we are not the first. Maybe uh, if we are working in SAP AG or something, we may develop something. But otherwise, we are not the first of guys doing whatever we are doing. Okay, so if you really feel that the business process that you have designed or you are configuring or you are trying out is so unique, so new, nobody has tried, then you should put a post after you have finished it. Just like others have done, then they completed it. 99% of the time, any issue you jump in into, somebody else also has jumped in into and some answer or the other will be available out there. Okay, so people keep talking, people keep talking out there. So it should be there. Okay, see, SE39 somebody has said, SE37 somebody has said. Okay, so you come across it. SE38, ABAP editor, tcodesearch.com, where is the site itself? <laughs> okay, www.tcodesearch.com. So this way, okay, people have spoken about it. Okay, there is there is information out there. When working with SAP, the first foremost key rule I always like, I also follow and I like my students or who are working on SAP to follow is do not try to reinvent the wheel. Okay, so this is a product which people have been using people have been working with, people have faced issues. Do not try to reinvent, okay, do not try, try and spend reinventing things, somebody would have done it. Search for an answer, SAP is all about search. Across functional areas, especially functional consultants will come across the situation a lot of times, many, many times. What happens is, you are trying to configure a business scenario and you are not able to achieve the kind of configuration you want. You're trying and trying and trying, doing this, doing that, you are not achieving. The And then you call up an Apapa and tell him, buddy, I want to do something, let us do an enhancement, develop something custom. Okay, 100 hours of work is defined. But if we had searched correctly at the right place, just a check of a checkbox would have been enough to get that application or the configuration running. It's a very common thing that functional consultants face. You do not know what the checkbox checking will do, so you ignore it. But that simple check of a checkbox would do wonders on the configuration. It's a very common thing that happens. So SAP is all about searching and exploring rather than developing. Even to above programmers, I always say that search. Did somebody write something like that? Did SAP write some logic like that? Okay, there is a business requirement. Search first. If SAP is doing something like that, if SAP is doing like that, then they have written for it. If they have written for it, why not I use it? Why again I will sit and write all the logic? I will use it. Check if it is a method or a function module. If it's a function module, how can I call it? What parameter should I pass so that the function module runs for me? This is how the logic, this is the thought process that we should have always. That's very important when you are working in SAP. Do not try to reinvent the wheel. It has been done out there, up and running. Wonderful product. SAP is a very beautiful product. If you ask me, if you go by the SAP business methodology, you don't even need any developer, nothing. Install it and like MS Office it will run. Do the basic configuration, uh, data migration, load the data into SAP, it will run. Why all these changes and tweaks and twists will come? The business process of the client will never match to the requirement of the, or will never match to the SAP system. There also, there is one primary reason. Nowadays, you cannot take the clients for a ride. There were times when we, we used to tell the client that it's not possible like this, just to get additional billing hours. Okay, so now clients have become intelligent, they share, they distribute the work. Earlier, like one consulting company will be there, he is doing all the way from uh, what gap analysis to go live and support, one fellow is doing, happily sitting and eating, blueprint, whatever he says is correct. Poor fellow, the client has, either he is having a lot of money or he doesn't understand what is doing. But nowadays they have become intelligent. Blueprinting they will give to one firm. Okay, even development, the realization phase is split into pieces and given to different companies. So <laughs> things have changed. The world of <laughs> consulting has changed in SAP. But still, so, see, the world of consulting is small. You will end up meeting the same set of people at some point or the other. Give the right set of consulting advisors, they will come back to us. So we should never try to consult or give them ideas in SAP, configurations in SAP. 
which will give us a few extra hours of delay. Give the right solution. If they check out the checkbox, is the right check it and we make a job. I don't want a hundred hours of development work. We'll get back. The, the business will come back to us. A lot of other requirements will come. So that is one thing we should always have it in our mind. Okay. So let me I deviate. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So coming back to easy access and T code. So AC38. Now suppose I am inside a transaction. I am inside AC38. To run another transaction, suppose I want to run AC11, it will not allow you. It will not allow you. AC11. You have to come back to the easy access and then give it. So to come back to the easy access, we have a command backslash n backslash n is to come back to the easy access. So what we can do is, suppose I am inside a transaction code, I can type backslash n se38. Now it will directly jump to the transaction code se38. See. Actually what is happening, it is coming back and then going to the next T code. We have clubbed the command basically. Yeah. Why I insist on this is many a times people consider backslash and SC38 is the transaction code. Okay. Okay, it's a common confusion people will have. They, they add backslash n to every T code and think that the T code is backslash and SC38. No. SC38 is a T code. Backslash n has been used to come back to the easy access. So you have many of them. One is backslash n. You have one more backslash o it will create a new session for you. See. One and two. It creates a new session for us. So I can type backslash O SE11. So it will create a new session and open up SE11 for me. See. Another session. We can have n number of sessions. No. <laughs> we cannot have n number of sessions. A maximum of six sessions can be opened per login. Per user login, a maximum of six sessions can be opened. Not more than six. Okay, like we are already at four, I think. So one is login pad, one, two, three, four. Another two more can be opened. Okay. Then you have one more backslash, like suppose. What is the name of the table? I have something called backslash h. Backslash h will start the program in debugging mode. See here, debugging switched on. So now when you do something, it will run in the debug. So you can start debugging your program. It's a bit slow. Other connection is well. So yes, the system is a bit slow, but it, it's running in the debugging mode. Okay. So backslash h. So you have backslash n and backslash o and backslash h. Okay. Uh, Shibu, are there any restrictions for the T codes or we can use any T codes uh, for, for creating any new? Yes. See, when you are working in a real-time environment, a user role will control the T codes the user can run. Mm -hmm. Based upon the user role, you will have certain things that you can run and certain you will not be authorized. Sometimes you will be authorized to display, like I have the read VA0 right screen. Read Similarly, I have VA03 for display. I can display a sales order. So what will happen is, as a user, you may be having authorization to display a sales order, but not change or create a sales order. Right. Okay, so that is defined by the roles provided to the user. Based on the roles, authorization will be set. Based on the authorization, controls on the transaction will be set. Access okay. control list. Yeah, so you will have a control. You know, that can be controlled. These are things that the basis and the security team will be doing all the time. Okay. Now, now coming back to... Okay, now we were discussing, in initially we had discussed about uh, like the repository object and uh, 
uh, how we will be doing the development and can we do the development directly into the main system and all. See what happens is we have to understand the SAP landscape. Then, okay, we have a concept called SAP landscape. In a landscape, in an SAP landscape, what will have what you will have is you will be having you will be having multiple SAP systems or multiple SAP layers. So we have something called as the development system. We have something called as the development gen. Normal SAP landscape will have three major systems. You will have the development system, the quality system and the production system. Okay, the development system, the quality system and the production system. The end user will always be accessing only the production system. The ABAP developer will be always working only in the development system. ABAP developer is never given access to the production system. Now what will happen is whenever a new ABAP program has to be written, the program will initially be developed in the development system. The development system will have no data. It's a junk, junk data, whatever little it has is junk. It have no data. In the development system you write the ABAP program. After writing the program, you do some basic testing, put some data, try to run and see. Everything is smooth, everything is running, then you need to move the code from the development system to the quality system or the testing system. There, some amount of data which is created by the functional owner will be there. That data will be used to check whether the code is running correctly or not, all the relevant information is there or not. And all. Once the code has passed all the tests, then it will move to the production system. So to move your program from one system to another system in the landscape, we have a concept called as change request or transport organizer. Okay, so using the transport organizer, what you will be doing is you will be moving your developments from one system to another to another in the system landscape. So any common real environment will have these three systems, minimum development quality and production. Sometimes some clients do not have money or due to any resource constraint they may have only development and production as the diagram comes here. They will create separate client for quality wherein they do the quality testing. If, if there are certain clients they have two quality system. We have worked for a client. They have development quality one, quality two, then production and one more on the sandbox also. Okay, so, so many systems are there. So sandbox, why 90% of the client have sandbox systems. Okay, see this is how you like. You have your dev. You have your developer. Clients are mostly financial clients or what? No, no, I didn't get you. I mean, you work on a financial clients so I mean, most of the clients are Nothing like that. I have worked, most of the clients that I have worked are I have worked on service lines, we have worked for service industry, we have done manufacturing industries where maximum clients that I have worked on. Okay. Financial, I don't remember any, I think one or two clients with Deloitte Consulting when I was. I worked on a financial plan, but otherwise it's pretty less. Most of them are in manufacturing. Manufacturing is, that is, why manufacturing is where SAP happening. was initially used. Yeah, SAP, SAP was, was initially came with manufacturing. Uh, yeah. Thing. So, that is where it is. So you have your development client, your testing client and your production client. Then you have this standalone client, this fellow who is called as the sandbox. Sandbox. Okay, this fellow is called as the sandbox. Okay. So this, why we generally keep the sandbox system is, sandbox is a replica of the production. Sandbox system is a replica of the production system. The only thing is it's a few months old will not be the latest system, it will be a system which is few months old. Okay. okay, so it will be a replica. So why we use this is, see so what happens is sometimes you encounter some issue in the production system. You cannot replicate or you cannot go into the production system and test that issue. So you are facing some problem. So what to do, how to do. So what we will do is, we, we go to this sandbox system and in the sandbox system, in the sandbox system, we try to replicate the error that you have faced. So to replicate the error, you need data. Without data, you cannot replicate. So in the quality system and all, it's not always possible or easy to replicate certain errors 
that you are facing. So the functional owner always needs the sandbox system so that there is data, very realistic data which I can use, replicate it, replicate the error or replicate the scenario which is leading to an error and then try to find out a solution. So it is not kept as part of the landscape. There will be no transport connection between the sandbox and the production system. It will be independent. So whatever you do the development in sandbox cannot be transported into any of the system. After doing it in the sandbox you have to redo it again in the development system, assign, trans assign transport requests and then move to quality, test it in quality and move to production. That's a normal process. Who is responsible for pushing the code from um, development environment to testing and testing to production? Uh, yeah, that is a big process in itself or sometimes it is peanuts also. I have worked on clients, there are both kind of behaviors I have seen. Transport management is a major activity on real-time SAP system, should be taken seriously. During initial years of SAP management, you will not see a lot of issues. What will happen is, over the years, the number of developments that come up, the number of changes, all these things keep on increasing and the number of transports that keep moving between dev and production increases like anything. So it's always a good practice to have a transport management. Okay, a team is designed, a set of activities are defined. So normally on big clients, they have a separate transport management team and weekly transport review meetings will be there. The ABAPR, the functional owner, everybody. Actually what happens is the functional owner is the ultimate responsible person for any development. That is where the ABAPR skips. So though ABAPR has developed the program, he is not responsible for it. The functional owner is ultimate owner of the development. So the ABAPR, the functional owner and whoever has tested it and the user, all of them sit together. Generally you have weekly or bi-weekly meetings depending upon the load of transport you have. And each transport, each development is reviewed in dev and in quality. So to move till quality is very easy. From development if you release the transport it will reach the quality. But from quality to production, Strict, stringent processes will be there in place. Only certain super user or key user will have the authorization or the right to move. The basis team, basis and security team is responsible for moving things to the production. So they have some key user. He will be there or she will be there. They will interact with this owner of the request. Why did you do this? What is the purpose of this development? Generally we have checklist. Will this development impact any other development? All the checklists are maintained, checked, cross-checked, and then only we move. After doing so much also, it will go to the production and create more ruckus. A common problem. <laughs> okay. What about the version control? Is there a SAP standard? Version control. ABAP has a feature called version control. If you go to ABAP, I'm trying to show you. ABAP has a feature called I am not able to see that. Repository information system. No, 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 no. Somewhere here you have modification. You have version oh. management. Ah, here yeah. utilities. Utilities. Version, yeah. okay. Okay. version management is there. Okay. Every single version. Actually, you have to strictly follow version management. Version management becomes more mandatory when same set of people are working on the same developments. Sometimes it happens, one or two developers are working on a large or complex code, you compulsorily do version management. Version management is done and each version is attached to a transport request. So what happens is you can always come back to the older versions if there is some issue. Version management is part of our development. Okay. For customization and configuration, I am not very sure. We will have to talk to functional owners to see if they have any technique of version management, but ABAP program have version management in place okay, and it's strictly followed also. Right. See all these things which when I say strictly followed, it's all client. It's up to you. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> so it's up to you. <laughs> okay. So that, that is the idea as far as your initial R by 3 system is concerned. R by 3 system, three layers, presentation layer, application layer and database layer. Presentation is your front end GUI. 
application layer is the SAP server where all the processing happens. Database layer is underlying database. It can be any RDB, any, any database. The only constraint SAP keeps is that it should be an RDBMS. You, yeah. I hope you know what RDBMS stands for. Stands for Relational Database Management System. Okay, RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. Should be an RDBMS. The primary reason why SAP insists on that is because SAP will create a hell lot of tables into your database. Okay, huge number of tables, and millions of tables are there in SAP. So all these tables are created into the database and these tables are well normalized. They have a proper relation with one another. And the consistency of the data in SAP is managed by this relationship. And data to be entered into SAP also should follow this relationship. Okay, that's very very important. SAP never allows you to enter data into its tables directly. <coughs> you should enter data only through the transactions. Some screens will come up, interface will come. You want to create a sales order. I know what is a table for sales order. VA, VBAK and VBAP is the table for sales order. So I can simply go in and enter some entry into the table. No, that's not the right way. You have to use VA01 transaction enter the data in the transaction and allow the transaction to create the sales order ensuring the consistency of the data very important for SAP. See SAP is a success is integration and how it is achieving that integration is because of this consistency of the data and the interlinking that data has throughout and it is achieved using this normalized tables that it has in the database. So the uh, backers should have uh, strong SQL skills, is that uh, mandatory? It has excellent. Abapers with a strong SQL skills is an excellent combination. Hmm. Abapar has to know SQL, that is for sure, no SQL. Yes. If he has strong skills, excellent. So and programming Abapar skills as well, Vishal. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Abapar should have. Abapar is a programmer. See, listen to the definition of an Abapar. A vapor is a programmer who knows a language called a vapor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you knowing the language called a vapor is not enough. First of all, you have to be a programmer. You should understand programming logic. Given a problem, you should be able to build a flow logic for the problem. Then you can write it in any language. Okay. Yeah. So I know to talk Telugu or Malayalam or Hindi or English. That's a different medium of communication. But am I, do I know to talk is the first question. <laughs> okay, so Avapar is a programmer. I always say that. Avapar is a programmer who knows the programming language called Avapar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that is the point. You can pick it up. Abap, the yeah, yeah. procedural Avapar is pretty straightforward. I'm telling you. It's a fusion. It's a fusion of business and the programming. We cannot be full-fledged programmers. A BC++ developer will find it very difficult to work in ABAP. He is, you know, hardcore programmer. But ABAP doesn't need all those things. Yeah. A lot of things I don't even think how SAP is doing. Like Sometimes people ask me how ABAP is compiled, what will happen to the compiling code, who knows. I don't know <laughs> what it will do. I am not bothered. I am bothered whether the sales order is getting created or not. Or the change that I introduce in the exit for the sales order, that is running or not. So that is the balance you have to build. You need, you cannot escape from that full solve. I don't understand sales order if you say, you will not be able to work in a single. So that is important. Like insurance is the sector. I don't understand insurance, I don't understand premium, then what are you doing in the insurance sector? So that is, that is the key thing. So that is very important. To okay. I have a question. Um, sorry, your name, we didn't get your name. Shibu, S H I B U, Shibu. Shibu. So, so, so uh, you might have gone um, your uh, background and experience with SAP. We, I think we missed it. Can, can we get a background of you, please? See, I have close to eight years of SAP experience, primarily in ABAP. Okay, uh, so I have worked like the pre current organization I am not supposed to tell, that is what big classes always says. <laughs> so I was working for multiple companies here in India, last I was working with Deloitte Consulting and all. Lot of ABAP experience, almost I am a postgraduate in computer science. Eight years I would say, eight, eight, nine years now in SAP ABAP. Before that I have done a bit of 
uh, C programming, Visual Basic and all. But ABAP was the key area, major chunk of my experience it runs around in ABAP, Deloitte. Before that I was in Mumbai where I worked for a company called Atos Origin. I don't know whether you know it. A small time company. So that is where it is now. I I have last few years, I would say last one or two years, I have been doing a lot of project management and those kind of activities. So now I have moved back to core programming. I have stepped down from all these management things for a while, focusing more on programming and all. Training again, with big classes I have been training online, training now I would say five years I think. From the time big classes have started, we have been together. I've been training. Whenever I get time, it's all time dependent. Mostly I used to take US students. Even now, because that is like early morning for me and it fits in. So now for me things have changed. There are like I I am free in the evenings. I work late into the evenings and from this time I am free. So that is where when you guys came in, we checked out our time, like three to three to five. It worked out for me, so I said okay we will take. Otherwise time becomes a big problem. Mostly I take it in the morning. Morning is like early mornings would be like almost daytime for you guys, I think, right? You are, are you in Hyderabad? I am based out of Hyderabad. I am based out of okay. Hyderabad. I have done all Good. my education, everything out here in Hyderabad. Any okay. of you guys are from Hyderabad? Nobody is from Hyderabad. I am from Hyderabad. Great. Narendra. Oh, okay, great. So at least few of you guys are there. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. So you you so guys Shib are Shib sorry, Shibu. Hmm? Shibu, sorry. So you you don't you didn't feel like moving on to the functional side. You still want to continue. I wanted that. to move on to project management, and I worked on that line for some time. Now I am looking forward to some PMP certifications and all. So for me, this is a learning phase now. I am focusing more on myself getting PMP certified and all. Functional, I know functional area. SD and MM are two functional areas which I know, but I cannot teach. I know it. Okay, when I'm working, mm -hmm. I work on those functional areas. I know yeah. SD. Comfort, I'm comfortable with sales and distribution and materials management. Those are two areas. Finance also, I have a grip. Not finance is too deep actually. I tried. I have close friends in finance. Sat with them, worked on projects. Tried. It's too much of it. SD MM is more realistic. We see. Sales, okay, coming, going, buying, selling, things which we can relate to far more easily. So right. Picking up was easier. Like finance is one area, production Money planning is an area. Going, you can't relate with it. <laughs> <laughs> production planning is one area which we tried. Like I tried for a time, for a while, but I couldn't. You have to be in the shop floor to understand all these terminologies. They say we we did one implementation on production planning, some development, nothing we understood. You right. sat with the owner and worked on the requirements, but very difficult. So you have to be there. So yeah, you need to have that background. Yeah. Ah, Functional. So otherwise very difficult. So, so just to let you know, we are primarily looking at uh, um, SAP insurance, insurance, which probably is a very new module. Yes, exactly. So you will have to help me. Yeah. Yeah, at least to, to see how the insurance looks like. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. So see, irrespective that, let me put one thing straight here. Irrespective of it is insurance or whatever module it is, now, it will ABAP will remain the same. You, what we will have difference or where we will uh, see the difference is primarily in the uh, at the core technical level. It will be the tables. What are the tables in which insurance related data is stored? What is the flow of data in insurance? Yeah, I will show you something. An understanding of flow. Suppose this is basically a business process. It starts with uh, inquiry, then sales, then uh, okay, you have customer, you have vendor, then you are doing the purchasing, you are manufacturing the goods, doing the MRP, blah blah blah. In that, some accounts payable, account receivable, cash, nonsense. This is at a very high level the business flow. 
flow of the business, okay, flow of information, material and the cash. So it's a fusion of both material and the cash, how the flow happens. From the inquiry to the sales to the finish with the MRP, I bring the labor cost, the customer, the vendor, the profit. Now, for a technical guy, for a functional owner, this is the flow. For a technical guy, this is the flow. Are you understanding this flow? This flow primarily talks about what are the primary tables in which the data is stored. How are these tables related to one another? How can you fetch data from these tables? So this flow is important. Now when we tomorrow focus on insurance, suppose, this is the key thing we have to capture in insurance. What are the key tables in insurance? What are the key business processes in insurance? Once we know the process, then we hunt the tables. Once we know the tables, then we hunt the relation in the table. Once we know this much, we can start working on that sector. So tomorrow we have a requirement to develop a report to list out all the customers whose insurance premium is due to be paid, blah, 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 so in the month, in the next week. So which is the table? Where, where are all the customers maintained? Where are all the premiums maintained? Where are all the different type of products maintained? What product gives what kind of flexibility? Which customer took which product and paid how much premium? Where is this information? When did that customer buy that particular product? So I paid the premium. Is a quarterly premium paying or an annual or a monthly? So this information is maintained in SAP. The functional flow is how do you gather this information? The technical flow is where is this information in the table? Once I get the table, I, I will write the SQL query fetch all the data. I want to report it. Build a need report. Report it. I want to migrate it to some third party. I want to send it to an agent. So create a file and transfer the file to somebody. Send the file. Or I want to do. So what you want to do with the data is the next stage. First question is where is the data and how are you going to get it? So where is, what is the business process based on which you will know what is the data, where is the data. So that is how the whole thing runs. So so that is why irrespective of the functional area, the activity remains the same. For an ABAP part, the story remains the same. You give me your business flow. You give me your, your process. I will work, I will map the tables to it. Once that thing is done, we are ready, we are okay. Now we can start playing around. So that's the idea. So same way in insurance also, you should have such kind of, you will be having obviously all the data flow, how the data flows into various tables. And the same diagram is this one. This is different. This is a business personal owner's diagram and what we saw below is a technical fellow's diagram. Okay, so yes, that is, will. yeah. Uh, uh, it means like from if we want to move from insurance domain to some other domain, mm. so again we have to like learn the new table, very quickly the tables and everything. Domain? Mm. You will have to. Every time you move into a new domain, you will have to have an understanding of that area, that business area, the business processes, key business processes, how SAP runs those key business processes. Okay, in insurance, okay, I don't know how much comfortable or aware you are about insurance. Uh, suppose um, I take uh, an activity like definition of a new insurance product. How do we do it in SAP? <laughs> insurance, and uh, as an example, I said like MedLife we have. So MedLife has lost a new product called uh, some uh, join everybody or low premium, one premium, some Jeevan Sati, something LIC has. Yeah, so how do I create the product in the SAP? Because once the product is in SAP, then I can uh, assign a customer or give this product to a customer. So then this customer will be using this product. So that means there is some transaction code out there which will help me define a product, define the features of a product. There is some amount of configuration and customization to be done. When a product is being defined, certain minimum criteria should be followed. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yes. Certain do, you have, do you have an insurance model installed? We, I, I have no clue actually. It will be looking that at your insurance. Basic SAP system does not have any insurance module. So I am waiting for you guys to show me the insurance module. Yeah, it's an external chameleon company which they overtake. I mean, right? I mean, recently. Uh, what? Yeah, Come back? 
is a company, Canadian company, Chameleon. Uh huh. The app actually using their their product. I mean, this app mm -hmm. module as their insurance. They actually, I think, they bought this company. SAP bought that company recently. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So they don't have so a native like one. Uh, to my knowledge, SAP has an insurance module. Yeah. However, it's not widely used yet. Okay. Chameleon is probably some kind of integration software that SAP is trying to integrate with insurance. Okay. That's correct. Like SAP, SAP already has. It will not come in because I have not heard or I have not worked on insurance module. For me, See, it's when, very new. Insurance yeah, when SAP is. came into being roughly 20 or 30 years ago, I think there were only two or three different modules. Modules. Finance, HR, and SD. Now we have about I think 20, 30 modules. So insurance is is a new module. That's true. See SAP real estate. There is a module very less used. SAP hospital, SAP bank. So how it will look as a system and all? See the look and feel will be same. Here you will have that new module coming up over here. As a patch, it will be there. So we will have like to see that system. Okay. Uh, add in. So we will have to see that system. Then only I can also comment. So I am. I will try to check out with friends around here if anybody is there who can provide us a server at least to see how this insurance module will look like. So yeah. one thing I can guarantee you, 100% written guarantee, ABAP will be the same one. <laughs> Even on your insurance module, ABAP will be the same. Okay. Right. Nothing to worry about that. Yeah, one of the guys asked a question, what if you, you know, move to a different domain? You normally don't move between domains. Once don't you are into a domain, HR domain, you pr probably remain in HR domain for the rest of your life. You yes. probably broaden your knowledge in other domains, but yes. you are a core, you know, functional consultant. Core functional person. HR domain, very difficult. Market will not accept you actually, very difficult. <laughs> or else you, you don't be. have to, you don't have to even change domains, because there is so much demand in the domain uh, that you will be. Yeah. You, you will spend your whole life, that is what I see, as an ABAPER, another 20-30 years of ABAP life is there. So so I can continue as an ABAP. Okay, I will have to add on things, new things are coming, HTML, BHTML, Web Pro, Pro, something coming. Read through the books, I add on my skill, but the basic thing will remain the same. Same is the domain area. Otherwise, like what you should be, be ready to take those chances. And I worked for three years. Yeah, one scenario I can say where change of domain is possible. You are a CRM, sorry, you are an SD consultant, you migrate to CRM. It's a, it's a natural growth or natural migration. You are a, a MM consultant, you migrate to WM, warehouse management, hot in US. Okay, okay, warehouse management is very hot in US because of all those uh, the typical warehouse style of business. From warehouse management, you move on to extended warehouse management. So it's a, it's a natural migration out there. MM to WM to uh, EW. Uh, HR to MM, if you say, they will question. They will say your resume is having some problem or you are having some problem. <laughs> okay, so that way. So oh, you are too genius so, for us, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, insurance sector, maybe you are finance, you are from a finance background and you migrate to insurance. It's possible. Okay, finance to insurance, finance to controlling, like finance and controlling and insurance. Okay, so it's there, it's out there. So it's, it should be natural succession or migration. Sure, or I'm, asking a, I'm asking in terms of for a vapor, there won't be any like a, uh, like restriction. Right? No, ABAPAR to migration is as I said, right? he keeps on picking up. Like, we started off ABAP as procedural, now we have mastered object oriented ABAP. We do procedural as well as object oriented ABAP. Now web dying pros and all those things have come. We are learning those things. So we, we slowly become comfortable with BSP, web dying pro and all. Tomorrow SAP says cloud computing, God knows what is that. So then we learn that. So that is the trajectory for an ABAPAR. He, he wants to stick to the core technical activity that way. Or else you move out completely. Uh, project, project management, people management and all that, you know, moving into sales, delivery and, and that direction. So that's another direction you have. Okay. Anyway, so let me, let me stop my session over here.